Hey there everybody and welcome back! For those of you that are interested in learning about doing longer 3D print jobs like this one here, which is going to take about 7 days and 22 hours start to finish, stay tuned, I'm covering the basics and what I've learned in today's video. Now before we get started, don't forget to like and subscribe and check out the channel for new content. Alright, so jumping straight in, this is a file, it's part of an Iron Man mask. I will be doing a screen share in a moment, which will not only cover the 3D print settings, but also where I got these files. Now before we do that, I did just want to show the final process, or basically just the last few hours of this print in action. So I am using the inland 3d printing filament so this is just the pla plus i'm using the white color for this particular print job because i'm likely going to be printing and then painting later but i did just want to walk through what this looks like as this print job is finishing up and then again i will show where i got the files just so the person who created them and provided them for free will get some credit now i did want to show so we will try to focus in here You'll see that it just shows greater than 100 hours for the printing time and remaining is 16 hours and 55 minutes or so. So we are sitting at about the 91% mark as far as the total print completion time uh, or percentage. So walking through some basics and then we'll do the screen share and then we'll wrap things up with the finished product and my final basically just lessons learned. So basically, this is no different, to be honest, than a normal print job. So the only complicated part is you want to be nearby in case anything goes wrong so you can try to fix it without needing to pause the print, restart, or anything like that. So covering the basic high-level issues, then we'll jump into screen sharing, and then I'll cover uh, more of like a general summary at the end when this is actually done printing, just to show you that it did finish. So the basics, first and foremost, for longer prints, you're going to want to make sure that you have enough high quality filament to finish the entire print job. Cura does enable you to give estimates of how much filament that you need, so that is going to be pretty critical. Second, you're going to want to make sure that your print bed is leveled. Even if you've done a couple prints since you've leveled it recently, the last thing that you want is halfway through the print to start noticing there are some issues. You're also going to want to make sure that you have cleaned your print bed very thoroughly and that you don't have any adhesion issues. So you're going to want to be present for the first few layers of the print to make sure that you're getting an even distribution of filament. And then lastly, you're just going to want to make sure that you're attending to this. You're not leaving it. It's not recommended that you leave these printers running when you're not present. You do have hot parts and materials, so you don't want to risk any electrical or fire issues. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and jump into the screen sharing where I will show the print settings. I am aware that you can do these, uh, basically optimize the settings to get this to be faster, but I want to show that 3D printers can very easily print seven to eight days straight. But again, it's always recommended to avoid that if possible. The last thing you want is to get to the top here and then find out all of a sudden that something's messed up and you have to start all over. So let's go ahead and jump into the screen sharing and then we'll wrap up with the finished product and show basically what I've learned from this process. All right, so before we jump into the settings and just kind of walk through the file itself, I wanted to show and give credit to the individual who made this. So you can look up Iron Man Helmet Articulated Wearable, and you should be able to find this online. You'll see we have quite a few different parts. The cool thing about this is this is actually provided for free. So I did want to make sure that the designer has some credit here. And then you'll see that you actually have a few different options for wiring and just to show what it should look like when it's been painted. So I do think that that is really really cool. Now we will close this and show the actual object that we're doing the print of in Cura. So you'll see that we have the mask that was uh, one of the middle pieces and it's the largest file and will take the longest to print. Now I want to make sure to preface here because I know there will be people who will make a note in the comments saying there are ways to reduce the print time and I am aware of that. This video serves two purposes or this project. First, I want to show that the Creality Ender 3 is more than capable of doing a 7-8 to eight day print job without any issues. Second, I want to show that you can do something like this when you're new to 3D printing, like I am, using pretty much all default settings. So, I will be doing this on the Creality Ender 3 V2.
you'll see in Cura, we have pretty much all the default settings, generic PLA mo uh, nozzle and it's 0.2 millimeters. You'll see we have super quality set. You'll see that we have, I think the default support overhang angle is 39 if I'm not mistaken. You'll see this, the support horizontal expansion. Pretty much all the settings here are set to default. Now I noticed when I downloaded Cura on a different computer that it gave a two to three day window, but that was when the quality was set to 0.2 millimeters. Again, you'll need to look up the settings to see what makes the most sense for you. I wanted a longer print job just to show again that this could be done with a new, um, someone who's new to printing as well as using default settings. So we have the actual file here. You'll see where the supports are going to be for this particular item. And I have a separate video, which I'll link in the description to go into more detail about supports. But you'll see we have seven days and 22 hours. We're estimating 435 grams of filament. So if you're spending about 20 to $25 USD on filament, you're probably gonna be using about half a roll. So that is the general idea and walkthrough of the actual item itself. Let's jump over to the print and see it in action and then walk through and see what we learn or what I learned during the process of doing this longer print. All right, so as this is printing, I did want to show one of the issues that I experienced, and that is with the filament here. Now, for context, this is the first roll of filament I've actually put on this printer, so I haven't taken it off, paused prints or anything else, basically cut it, loaded it straight away. So I wanted to show the first issue that I had while going through this print, and that was the filament basically getting tied up right here. So I didn't do anything except immediately clip it and basically load it straight into the extruder. But you'll notice that it looks like the filament is actually wound. So if we continue to rotate, you'll see that it's not coming out as expected. Normally you would expect it to be layered and just kind of feed straight in. But because it has several layers crossing on top of each other here, it got to a point where as it was going into the printer, it actually locked up right here and it wouldn't move. The extruder was trying to pull the filament, but it basically got in kind of like a knot right there. So what I would recommend doing is just be nearby. What I heard was this kind of like a clicking noise where it was trying to grab the filament and feed it in. But I did get to it in enough time to where it doesn't look like it actually damaged the print. But unfortunately, what that means that I have to do now is either pause the print, cut it, try to get that filament moving again, which I don't want to risk and, you know, a print job that takes seven days. So the alternative is I've been taking this off and I've just been basically unwinding just enough to where I'm able to expect it to go for another eight or so hours. So I'll unwind it and basically just back up and get probably, I would say, about eight to 10 feet or so, and then rewind it slowly and securely without trying to bump the actual printer itself. This does risk damaging the print, but it has been working for me so far. As you can tell, this print is coming out pretty nicely, and we only have a couple of hours remaining, at least compared to the total print time. All right, so this is finishing up printing. I will go ahead and focus in right here really quickly. You'll see we have one minute remaining. So I do want to note while this is finishing up, it's basically just rounding the edges up at the top, but it is currently July 27th, so it's Thursday. I started this print Wednesday, July 19th at 11.17. So this has actually taken just over eight days of printing. Now, I will have an other videos on this. I'll link them in the description. But basically, this has been going for a full eight days and then some. So roughly eight days. And based on the time that it's going to be finished, it will probably be about eight days and probably eight minutes or so. And it's finishing up right now as, it, as it's showing remaining time zero. And you see that the print head is actually moving over and it's basically resetting. So this has officially completed and you'll see right here, we're showing printing time greater than 100 hours. So it's officially 11.22 p.m. on July 27th 
and this was started July 19th at 11.16 p.m., so that is officially eight days and six minutes total print time start to finish. I did not stop the printer at any point or pause it or anything like that, so it was a solid eight-day print job. Overall, I think everything came out pretty well, all things considered, so let's go ahead and take this off the tripod, and we'll walk around and cover the final lessons learned for this. So I already covered the concern about the filament and also making sure that you have plenty of filament. I also recommend for longer print jobs that you are making sure that you're checking the tension on all relevant belts. This is going to be a very, very critical piece for the print. The last thing that you want is something to get bent or warped or anything like that during the print. So make sure when you're leveling the bed that you're paying attention to the first couple of layers and then regularly checking on it to make sure everything's going okay. Your filament isn't getting stuck, that you have enough filament, that all of your belts and everything else are <clears throat> basically set correctly, they have the proper amount of tension. Also, you're gonna wanna make sure that you check moving components like these right here. I'll focus in a little bit. You'll see that these are starting to get a little bit worn. Now, a little bit of wear is going to be okay, but one thing to note, if I'm not mistaken, when I started this, there was either no wear or barely any on these little wheels here. So another thing to note is printing for extended periods, I'm going to just assume is going to wear these components down more than doing smaller print jobs, kind of like car tires. If you were to drive extended periods, they're going to get warm and heat up and wear a little bit more quickly than shorter trips. So you're going to want to make sure that you've tightened everything. So the last point I'm going to leave you with is basically just securing everything you can possibly think of for longer print jobs. Normally this would be done when you're installing, but I have another video or other videos where I've discussed how the axis on mine was a little bit bent when I first installed it. So I ended up having to unscrew and kind of adjust and tighten everything back. So the general idea is any of the moving parts, make sure that they're tightened, adjusted, configured properly. And then again, make sure that everything's leveled and you're checking on things regularly. Now, I hope this video was helpful and covered a couple of smaller issues. Another thing you may want to consider just as I'm kind of wrapping things up is looking into some higher quality PLA like PLA plus. Higher quality PLA is going to cause less issues as you're going through the print or just higher quality materials, depending on what you're looking to print. So I hope that this overall was helpful. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment box below and I'll see you all in the next video.